Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Eastern and to part 3 of building the Saracen's Head and um, we're over here at the North Eastern so we can compare sizes um, basically between the Medcalf kit we have here which has been refurbished against the Saracen's Head that I'm building so what I'll do, I'll just place this part next door to the northeastern and as you can see there's not a lot of difference in the size and it's slightly wider um, not by much about five or six millimeters but it's not as deep as you can see so I just thought I'd uh, show you that so you get a rough idea um, of the size of this pub so without further ado let's get stuck in let's see what we can achieve this week so here's where we left off from last week um, I was just putting the cornice um, front and back and the next thing I want to do is the actual helmet that goes around the door and I'm going to copy that a little bit onto the back as well so um, let's get started I have stuck together two pieces of 2mm card by 5mm wide and I wrapped it in paper now this is going to form the edges around the door here so I'll leave that to dry because I've only just PVA'd that together and it'll take a while to dry before I can uh, actually get around to cutting it so we'll put that to one side now then another detail I'm going to start adding which might take me a while to do is to put this radius in around the top edges so what I'm going to do for that, I'm going to use some 1mm rod and I'm just going to super glue it to the edges and then when I come to put the capping stones on we've got a nice neat effect so there's a lot to do as you can imagine the whole building has got to be done with this edge this has taken a little bit longer than I thought because each piece of this 1mm round rod has got to be mated to suit the direction of the strip if you know what I mean. So as you can see we've got a fine miter at the top and almost a 45 degree angle down here and to stick it down I'm just using a tiny tiny drop of super glue at the top and a tiny drop of super glue at the base and basically just place it in place as it were making sure the mitres are going the right way bearing in mind this super glue does go off really quick stay put it's got a hold of it at the top but it hasn't got a hold of it at the bottom just yet so I may have to tweak it a little bit no it's got a hold of it now and, uh, make sure that you're flush with the top edge as it were give it a couple of seconds for the, the glue to take a hold it's got it at the top and not at the bottom and once it's got a hold of it you flip it up on edge and then just make sure that it's flush along the top and then we can add a super glue run all the way down this edge It 
does go off really quick and there you go as you can see it just tidies up these edges really nice and uh, I've already done the front obviously there's a capping stone goes across the top as well which finishes it off uh, like I said it's all about getting your mitres in the right place so just a case of holding that there which is easier said than done and then just mark that across there with a pencil Do your 45 cut, and then offer it up, and that looks reasonable, still too long, as you can see, you can still see the card at the top there, so I've just got to trim a little bit back off that. So that's now ready for gluing. As you can see I've made a start on the door frame around the main entrance. Um, the card that I had glued together earlier with the paper round I have cut that roughly thirty three millimeters to the to the base on both and that across the top there works out 35 now we got five millimeters worth of card here and here and uh, now we can start doing the pelmet that goes round the door so it'll just come around the door across the top and then back in towards uh, the wall and that's just a case of doing a lot of mitering um, at 45 degrees. So we'll just glue this piece on first. Um, we can then make a start on the other mitres. Now, according to my original drawing, that should be 34 millimeters to the underside. So we shall see about that. Yeah, that's roughly where we want it. 34 millimeters to the underside. And then we'll just wipe off the excess glue. Now there's not a lot of gap between the window and that cornice as it were. So we'll just make sure that that's square. After making sure that that was square to the wall, uh, I've progressed on a little bit, so I'm just checking to make sure that uh, the last couple of mitre bits, which is uh, this piece here, uh, actually fits. And then we'll glue it in, just using the old rocket glue. finish it off like so so we shall glue that in do now is some contact glue on the corners and that will melt the mitres together 
and uh, we're there. Right, so as you can see, I've uh, almost finished the doorway. I've added some 2mm half round um, around the frame and mitered, and that seems to have um, set it off quite nicely. Um, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to cover up um, all the card joints on the top there. So I'm just using a little bit of paper, uh, 7 millimeters by 37 millimeters, and that will just hide all these card joints on the top. So a little bit of glue on there, and uh, that will finish that off nicely. And that just makes a, a nice neat uh, finishing touch to the doorway. Yes, we're almost ready for painting the building now. Just got to work on the door arches here. Um, what I might do is just add a piece of trim to go right away across the length there and uh, I think that should be enough. I have now added one of the uh, stone features that are on the front of the building. I'm not sure whether they're just chimneys or ornamental stones and um, basically all I've done there is I have wrapped piece of paper around three pieces of card uh, at two mil um, it's eight by six um, so that will just glue onto the front like so and uh, we're almost ready for painting be interesting to see what this looks like when it's all painted in a sandstony color so here we go, we're adding some colour to the building at last. Um, the paint I'm using is a Revel semi matte 314. It's like a desert colour. and uh, It looks quite close to sandstone, but it, ideally it's, it's good for a base coat. Um, if you look here, you can still see the pencil coming through the paint, and it's only the first coat. And as you can see, there is a bit of a change going on there with the um, sandstone. It does look, um, well, more like a photograph now. So yes, it will need a second coat. So what a difference uh, a couple of coats of paint make. Um, as you can see, I think I've got the desired effect that I want. Um, I could have scribed the card just a little bit lighter. Maybe I was a little bit too heavy on it, but uh, I think um, a couple of coats of paint has um, softened it down a little bit. So it's time to put in the glazing, as you can see I've started already with the window there and I've added the glazed sheet behind um, this um, shop front come bar entrance there. So that's the next thing, to fill in 
all the windows with the glazing. Now I'm not even going to bother painting them, I'm going to glue them in as they are. Straight into the frames. So we shall see what it looks like then. Now with regard to fitting the windows, it's just the same as it would be if you were fitting these as a kit. So I'm just putting a little drop of contact glue into each corner and then just run it along the edge there on the inside and then we can just drop the window in. And we'll just flip the building over to make sure that the window frame is somewhere in the middle. See, we still move it around. And then we can fit the glass in. Basically, what we do with the glass is just drop it in. Like we did with the window frame and then using some glue and glaze put a little dab in each corner and then run it along the seam and uh, I'll just use a toothpick to run it in Still moving around a little bit, but eventually, once you get the, the four corners um, glued in, it'll stay put. And just run it along the edge. That totally seals it in there. Now there we go, simple as that. Just wipe off any excess glue you've got in the card. I mean, uh, these walls won't be painted, but uh, the walls in the rooms will be. Because uh, I've got some plans for those rooms. Now that the windows are done, what I'm doing now is where I have given the whole building two coats of paint you can barely see the pencil lines um, that were there so all I'm doing is just lightly very lightly putting them back in uh, just to highlight the fact that these are individual stones and if you put the pencil line in too dark you can always get your rubber and just uh, rub it back out again. The next thing I'm going to look at is the fireplaces. Um, there's one going there and there's one going in there in the bar and uh, I've cut a strip of 10mm card 
and a strip of even thinner card at 2mm. So I'm going to do I'm going to glue a bit there and then glue a bit there and then that gives us the fireplace. So I shall glue these bits on and see you in a bit. And this is what you're left with. Um, as you can see I've divided them up into 11 mil sections so I can get quite a few fireplaces out of this small strip of um, 70 mil uh, 11 mil in height 10 mil across and the idea now is, is to cut a thinner piece of card which is just 1.5 mil and put a little piece across each one of these fireplaces. So we shall measure across there, it should work out about 6mm, which it does, 6mm. So we shall cut these pieces at 6mm and then glue them in. We have now glued the little pieces of card onto the fireplaces uh, underneath the 11mm line markings. We have then measured up um, from the base of these fireplaces 6mm and it's roughly a millimetre and a half in either side and then a crescent shape. So that then becomes the actual fire hearth. So what we can do now, we can do two things, we can paint them while we can um, handle it, so what I'm planning to do is planning to paint this inner piece black and this outer piece white and once I've done that we can cut them out individually and cut out these crescent shapes and stick a little piece of paper on the back and then paint the flames inside these crescent pieces Now that the paint is dry, um, I've cut them up into their individual fireplaces as you can see and the only thing left to do now is to glue on the mantel pieces so just a little bit of super glue on that one mil card Sure, the back back's flush. I've made them a little bit wider so I can trim them if I don't get them in the middle first time. Like I have here. Painted later. The other piece to add is the actual fireplace. I have now stuck on a piece of paper which is just the right width of the fireplace, and then we'll just trim that off. I used super glue by the way. And then we can super glue the actual fire hearth to the fireplace. And a little bit more super glue. Just making sure it's flush with the back. Right, we have moved on a little bit and finished off to these fireplaces. I've just placed the figure there to give you a guesstimate of how tall these fireplaces are. But if I put this rule here, you can see they're roughly between 13 and 14 millimeters tall. Now, you can 
make them any size you want within the uh, double or gauge scale range because uh, they do come in various sizes but these are probably the smallest you probably find um, they end up in terrace houses and things like that obviously they are some bigger ones but uh, yeah so in the end we glued the bases on which are as roughly about four mil wide by um, 40 millimeters across and um, yeah painted them red and highlighted some black and yellow inside the fireplaces so they look like they are lit and uh, yeah not a bad job and uh, if we go over to the pub there's one in there already just move these cables out of the way and as you can see we're slowly detailing the bar areas so on that note we're uh, coming to the end of this video so another milestone has been reached um, we have now painted the pub and um, we've done the um, doorway as you can see I've uh, put a little hole there between the window and the uh, doorway roof that's for a light um, and that I'm hoping to put over the doorway just something similar to what's in the photograph but it uh, might not be the same as the photograph and uh, yeah so I think that's all from me until next time stay safe everybody and enjoy your model railways bye for now bye